uh, welcome to the lecture 19 that is a label C pest and disease management. So, earlier lectures we have discussed about the pest and disease management using the label A and label B. Label A was the preventive measures or using the cultural practices in organic farming how we can manage the pest and diseases and label B was the physical and mechanical methods uh, uh, in uh, during the uh, cultural practices uh, by using the physical methods as the light traps or the elastic traps and the mechanical methods like the tillage uh, like the um, summer plowing, solarization, mulching. So, those methods we have discussed uh, for the pest and disease management in organic farming using the preventive as well as the physical and mechanical method. This lectures we will be discussing about the label C that means use of biological control measures the bio pesticides or the botanical pesticides for controlling pest and diseases in organic farming. So, what is the uh, uh, biological control? If you see the biological control uh, or the bio control you can say uh, this is the use of natural enemies uh, to manage a population of pests and the diseases. So, it uh, uh, relies on uh, predation that is a parasitism, herbivory or other natural uh, mechanisms. Uh, uh, that is but uh, typically that depends also the human beings the management uh, uh, usually that depends upon the, the human beings how they manage the pest and diseases using the natural enemies or the natural predators. For example, so the natural predators are the ladybird beetles or the predatory galmis or the hoverfly larva against many aphids uh, or the cellulites. You can see the, the photo as you can see here there is a surface overfly larva feed on, on aphids uh, making them natural biological control. So, they can control the aphids uh, by using the either the ladybird beetles, the predatory galmis or the hover, uh, hoverfly as a natural uh, um, uh, organic organisms the bio, bio controls. So, those insects those organisms can be applied uh, can be reared in the laboratory can be released in the field for controlling the harmful insect pest for the uh, for attacking or for killing for the reducing the population of harmful insect pest and diseases. So, what is biological control? So, one is the the types you can see one is the introductions. So, introduction means it involves introduction of the pests of natural enemies to a new local where they do not uh, occur naturally. That means, so you are introducing the pest, some pests uh, uh, of natural enemies. So, as they do not uh, habitate in that location, so here the newly introduction is introductions. Second is augmentation, augmentation means those uh, the natural agents they are present, but we need to supplement them to increase their populations for, for effective control of the pest and diseases. That means, augmentation involves the supplemental release of natural enemies that occur in a particular area boosting the natural occurring populations. So, because those uh, natural enemies, natural organic, the, the bio agents the bio control agents. So, those are present, but we want to release them time to time. So, that increase their populations and to become the more effective of the uh, pest and disease control. For example, trichogramma, trichogramma. So, that you see the, the cards with the trichogramma against the corn fruit borer. So, the, this is a egg parasites. So, that can that can that is uh, inoculated with the card uh, and that can control the fruit borer of the corn crop can be controlled using the trichogramma is a fungus. This is a beneficial fungus trichogramma that is used to controlling many insect pest and diseases. And the, uh, the uh, next one is the conservations. Conservation means the natural enemies are already adapted uh, to the habitat and to the target pests and their conservation can be simple and cost effective. That means to manage the natural habitat. habitat to provide them proper food materials pro, uh, so that this uh, the natural uh, enemies or the biocontrol agents their growth can be maintained and th their growth can be supported by providing them proper habitat. That means, for example, nectar producing crop plants. So, they are grown around the rice field. So, provide nectar to support parasitoids and uh, predators of plant who purpose especially the brown plant hooper is a very common uh, the, the insect uh, in rice crops. So, 
the infestation of the brown plant plant hopper they cause a serious damage. So, this has happened in Odisha also last year you can see there is a severe loss of the rice production in eastern part of Odisha due to last massive infestation of the brown plant hopper. And uh, if uh, we can grow some of the nectar producing plants uh, around the rice field, so they can provide the habitat or support for this predatory bug that is a Kirtuhinos uh, livida penis. So, that box usually used to feed on the eggs of the brown plant hopper. So, by releasing this box, this predatory box that is the Cirtoinos uh, libido penis, it can feed on the uh, eggs of the brown plant hopper. So, those population of brown plant hopper can be controlled and the crop can be protected from the infestation of the BPH or this brown plant hopper. So, in a research study, it can, you can find that using uh, different uh, nectar plants that is E uh, sonsifolia, T procumbens, T erecta, S indicum and control means so there is a uh, no introduction of any nectar producing plant around, around the rice crop. So, these are the nectar producing plant are grown around the rice crop and the effect of the nectar producing plant is observed on this uh, predatory bug that is your Cirtoinus levitopenis. So, how they consume on the, the BPH X that is a brown plant hooper X. So, these are the female predatory bugs and these are the, the effect of the male predatory bugs on the consumption of the uh, X of the brown plant hooper. From this figure you can see among the nectar producing plants S indicum that is a sesamum indicum that is the very very effective because that having the sesamum indicum around the uh, rice fields uh, the border of the rice field. So, this uh, predatory bug is used to consume more number of eggs. So, I uh, see the sesame indicum either in the female or the male females are effective as compared to male. So, they, they do consume huge number of eggs consumed by the bugs uh, the predatory bugs as higher having the uh, nectar producing plant around and the nectar producing plant sesamum is highly effective because if it is a control plant in control control uh, control field. So, there is no introduction of the nectar producing plant. So, this is the uh, this is the consumption of the BPS by this predatory box Cirtoinus levitopenis. Having the nectar producing plant like sesamum indicum. So, there is more number of BPS X is consumed consumed by this predatory box. So, that can protect the crop from the uh, pest and the that is uh, BPS uh, attack can be controlled by introducing this uh, natural enemies that is the predatory box uh, Cirtohinos lipidopenis. So, sesame indicum this, so that is the best one seems to be. So, this, this is a published research from the so this author in 2014 selection of natural plants for use in ecological engineering to promote biological control of rice pest by the predatory box Cirtohinos lipidopenis. So, this is published in plus one. Uh, in 2014. So, uh, so as you see, uh, so for this biological control, so we have to introduce the natural enemies to the field where they are not grow habitat earlier, or we have to augment their populations by introducing them, by introducing them, releasing them, or uh, and second thing, we have to conserve their populations by providing the suitable habitat like nectar producing plants from the plants, so that they can get the food materials, they can have their more population uh, activity of these natural enemies can be increased. So, that they can protect the crop from the uh, harmful insect pests and diseases. The uh, population dynamics of uh, pests and the predators, if population of natural enemies present in the field are too small to sufficiently control pests, they can be reared in laboratory and uh, for the rearing units and the reared natural enemies are released into the crop to boost the field population and keep the pest populations uh, under control. So, there are uh, two approaches uh, to biological control uh, through a release of uh, natural enemies. So, number one is the uh, preventive release of uh, natural enemies uh, at the beginning of uh, each season. So, this happens. So, because sometimes it so happens that the uh, the climate changes, the host plant changes, the plant changes. So, this is the used to a natural uh, uh, when the natural enemies would not uh, could not persist from one cropping season to another cropping season due to unfavorable climatic conditions. Uh, 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 or the uh, the absence of the pests. So, population of the natural enemies uh, they, they then establish grow during the seasons by releasing at the beginning of the season. The other way uh, when the, there is a need then you can re release the natural enemy that means 
releasing natural enemies when pest population start to cause damage to crops. So, in that case, um, so patho usually this is very common so when the pathogens are populations are above the threshold level. So, you can see that then you have to release the natural enemies to control the pest. So, pathogens are usually uh, used in that way uh, because they uh, cannot be persist uh, and spread in the crop environment without absence of the uh, host means of pest. So, they need to for their food materials. If you see this is the uh, pest populations, you can figure pest population, the population and this is the figure for the predators or the natural enemies. So, as we go on releasing the natural enemies to the field, as the population of the natural enemies or you can say the predators increases, the pest population decreases. As you go on uh, again increasing, releasing the natural enemies predator as the population goes on increasing, then slowly the population of the pest that goes on also decreasing. So, so we do uh, release this uh, natural enemies of the bio, bio, bio control agents like, uh, like this trichrogramma. Similarly, we will discuss many other the botany uh, the um, microbial insecticides or pesticides that can be used in the field to control several uh, pest, uh, pest and diseases. Uh, so, that is uh, so these are the microbial insecticides I say. So, they can be um, rare, they can be released in the field for controlling many pest, pest and diseases whether they are can be bacterial, uh, they can be fungal and also virus. So, we will discuss about the microbial insecticide that is uh, the bacterial say bacillus thuringiensis that is a Bt name is Bt the short form Bt bacillus thuringiensis is a bacteria that is used to control many insect pest and diseases as a bio agent or micro that is as a microbial insecticides. They control caterpillars and they control the uh, beetles in vegetables and uh, other agricultural crops, mosquito and black fly control. So, the Bacillus thuringiensis, the variety Kurstaki uh, and Bacillus thuringiensis variety I J I the uh, that are work against diverse Lepidopteran pests. So, that is African army worm, African boll worm, bean worm, army worm, beet army worm, cabbage web worm green looper, spin ball worm, pot borers, tomato uh, looper. So, these are the some of the pests can be controlled by releasing uh, the uh, microbial insecticides that is bacteria bacillus thuringiensis. So, this can be used to control uh, many type of the uh, pests in the field. And also some fungi, they, are, they also act as a uh, microbial insecticides, they, they control many insects using the fungi trico, trichoderma. So, the fungi that were trichoderma that is that is extensively used in Asia for prevention of soil burn diseases such as the damping of and the root rot in vegetables. Damping of means the root rot as you see the figure in the this sides. So, there is a root uh, as a rotting of the roots then the plant slowly collapses. So, the plants wilts and also plant dies due to damping of this is a fungal disease. And this uh, the causal organism the fungus, fungus is Rhizoctonia solani, the, the fungus uh, that cause the disease uh, damping up. To control this Rhizoctonia solani, the fungus that is causing the damping of disease, so Trichoderma uh, har, aja, harginum, the Trichoderma fungus that is effective for controlling this Rhizoctonia uh, solani. So, that is the Trichoderma species against African bone, so Trichoderma har, harginum. It is known as the parasite important plant disease like uh, damping up and uh, trichoderma species can uh, affect the plant disease by antibiosis and competition. So, they can suppress the growth of the Rhizoctonia solani, the trichoderma species. So, it works as a uh, in addition to that it works as a growth stimulant and improves the yield and product quality. So, using the trichoderma species or releasing trichoderma species in the field not only controls the pest and diseases uh, like, uh, like your damping of diseases are also that uh, uh, that act work as a stimulants growth stimulants uh, that can improve the growth and of, uh, of course that improves the the quality of the crops crops in terms of the nutritional quality quality and there are some uh, fungi that work uh, against insect like a uh, bivaria bassiana and entomopathogenic fungi so that causes uh, white uh, muscadine disease in a range of insects so that is used for controlling uh, many uh, in insects and some of the strains of fungi that is strains is BB147 that is used to control the corn borers in maize and also strain GHA that is used to against white fly thrips, aphids and the mealybugs in vegetables and ornamental. So, these are the fungi that can be released, they can be reared, they cultured, they can release in the field 
as a bio agent natural enemy so they can kill they can uh, they can reduce the population of the harmful pathogens in the field so the viruses uh, that say nuclear polyhydrosis virus npv so those are effective for control of several caterpillar pest species so because every insect species require a specific nuclear polyhydrosis virus so like the armyworm that's a uh, sporoptera exigua so this is a major problem in indonesia but that is controlled by specific polyhydro uh, uh, um, nucleo poly, uh, polyhydro uh, hydrosis virus that is scnpv for against the armyworm sporoptera exigua so these are the virus are very specific so like the the you can use the um, bacteria or the fungal and the virus virus as a natural enemies uh, as you can read in laboratory they can release the field so they can control many of many pests and the diseases in the field uh, so that uh, so that the plant can be protected uh, or the the crop can be protected from the pest and disease and land the yield loss can be minimized so there are also uh, bio pesticides you see the some plants uh, they contain the components like uh, they are toxic to insects so this is, this is the bio pesticides when these plants uh, extracts applied on infested crops uh, they are called the botanical pesticide that means there are some plants they are the extracts of the plants they contain the toxics uh, that's a toxic to the some compounds chemical compounds so those are toxic to insect and the extracts when applied to the plants so um, so the, the they can protect the crops from from many insect pest and disease and they are called as a botanical pesticides as they are extracted from this the plant species so for some example we see uh, as their chitin that from neem neem is a beautiful product it's a good product for this uh, agricultural purpose it can it can used as a fertilizers it's used as a pesticides in addition neem has other uses of course it has a use of pharmaceutical industry and it has a cosmetic industry also use the neems uh, so the as as there chitin that's a compounds neem that is used for controlling many pest and diseases similarly pyrethrins that is from the chrysanthemum flower species so that is produced from the chrysanthemum that is also used for the controlling insect pest and disease so other rotenone the derived from the dairy species that's a uh, roots from the uh, uh, dairy species then nicotine that is from the tobacco limo nen uh, that is from the citrus plants so uh, th those have been used as botanical pesticides to control the uh, many uh, several uh, several pest and diseases most botanical pesticides are contact the respiratory or the stomach poisons uh, therefore they are not very selective but target to a broad range of that's uh, range of insects so as uh, because the botanical pesticide they don't kill the insect rather they do paralyze the insects and they make the inactive of this uh, the inactive uh, the insects that makes um, the knockdown effect paralysis of the insects so they are uh, contact uh, the the respiratory or the stomach poison uh, poisonous so there is a temporarily uh, knockdowns or the paralysis so that way they are they are effective against the broad range of insects botanical pesticide is generally highly biodegradable so that uh, they become inactive uh, uh, um, uh, within hours or the few days this uh, reduces again the negative impacts of beneficial organisms and they are environmentally safe and compared to chemicals so that's why so using the botanical pesticides because they become inactive within a uh, few hours uh, uh, or uh, within a few days so this they don't harm this the uh, beneficial insects or beneficial organisms so if you are, if you are using the chemical pesticides they do affect of course they do kill the harmful insect at the same time use of chemical insecticides they do uh, reduce the population of the beneficial organisms which are really required for uh, agricultural point of view from for crop production point of view the, they they do influence the they do uh, they do improve the soil fertility by having some beneficial microbes using the synthetic pesticides they do kill the harmful insect pests as well as the beneficial organisms are uh, population of the beneficial organisms are reduced by using the synthetic pesticides so, so that's why the button the botanical pesticide they are safe so they, they they may have effect but that's only few hours I mean few days again they can recover from this uh, from that effect so we will give the um, biopesticide one is the commonly used botanical pesticide neem 
So, this neem this is the active ingredient uh, this is azdarchitin. So, both uh, this is deters and kills many species of caterpillars, thrips and white fly. So, neem seeds contain uh, the higher amount of the neem oil. A neem solution loses its effectiveness within about 8 hours after preparation and when exposed to direct sunlight. So, the neem solution either the neem oil or the neem based solutions used for the controlling pest and disease. So, uh, if they are exposed to sunlight, so the effectiveness is reduced. So, that is why when you go for the neem based uh, pesticide, we do apply during the evening hours. So, to uh, so that it can be effective, it can it can control the pest and disease and also uh, this this remains the effectiveness within uh, up to 8 hours. So, that is why it should be immediately applied after the preparation. Though most effective to apply neem is the in the evening directly after preparations under humid condition, we should not store it for longer periods. So, once the solution is prepared, so it can be applied immediately and also in the evening hours. So, these are the neem products as per the pest control. So, neem you can get the products from the fruits, we can get from the bark of the neem, flower and the leaf. So, it is a neem tree, so you can have the uh, like the fruit, you can have the pulp, then get the seed, from the seed you can get neem oil and neem cake. Neem cake is used as the biofertilizers. So, this contains many nutrients of both macro and micronutrients and also this has the insectarial properties, it can control the insect pest and repel the insect pest and disease at the same time it supplies nutrients for the crop growth and development. And from the bark there is a phytochemical, so that can be used as a pesticides and also the neem cake as you can use as a um, biofertilizers. From the flowers we get the neem oil, neem oil is used as pesticides also may or many other industry now the phytochemicals also is produced from the flower and leaf also that gives the phytochemicals the, the compound the ac active ingredient uh, as the chitin for the control of the insect pest and disease and also uh, neem oil is also produced from the leaf. So, these are the neem trees for all the um, parts. So, leaf, uh, fruit, bark and flower. So, entire part is used uh, as, a as a useful uh, products either the controlling the pest and diseases or having the biofertilizer making biofertilizer to supply nutrients for the requirement of the crop growth and development and also neem has the several other uses. You can see the neem the uses of the neem. The neem has been used uh, the medicine for the treatment of uh, treatment treatment of conditions such as malaria, ulcers, cardiovascular disease, and the skin problems. And in the cosmetic and the hygiene sector, neem is used in the composition of the uh, the, the face mask, lotions, sunscreens, soaps, and the toothpaste uh, use the neem. So it is a powerful insect growth regulators that also affect many other organisms such as the nematodes and fungi and can act as a plant fertilizer, so the bio fertilizer as you discussed. So, this uh, this has the insectidal properties, it can kill the insect, repel the insect, make paralysis of the insect and also it can act as a bio fertilizer, the supply nutrients for the growth and development of the crop. The neem seed cake can be used uh, as a bio fertilizer providing the micronutrient essential for plant growth and improvement, plant growth and improve the soil quality and enhance the quality of the crop. So, uh, having neem, using neem that soil quality in terms of soil fertility or the soil productivity, soil biological population, soil uh, because uh, uh, this, uh, this kills the many harmful insect pest and diseases and also uh, this increases the population of the, the beneficial organisms and also supply nutrients to the um, nutrients in the soil. So, that improves the soil fertility and uh, also the growth and development of the crops improved by supplying by having the neem cake as a bio fertilizer. Due to their compositional complexity, uh, this act as a antifidants, growth regulators, sterilants, uh, anti ovipositions agents, and repellents. So, as discussed, so implants are the anti, so that anti oviposition agents, so that they can, so egg population the benefits, uh, the harmful microorganisms can be, um, population can be maintained by applying this neem based products. And the neem application and commercial product available worldwide you can say. So, there is a um, application of fertilizers, the product and the manufacturer uh, in India and manufacturer in uh, world. You can see uh, the fertilizers, so the neem, uh, neem based products, uh, ozoneem cake, 
and that is from ozone biotech and also ozonium coat uh, that is from the ozone biotech that can use fertilizers then parker neem coat parker uh, parker neem neem urea guard neem x so these are the uh, uh, manufacturer in india they 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 produce the neem based uh, bio fertilizers uh, that is for the used for the crop uh, growth and development and some agrochemicals that is for controlling the pest and diseases uh, that is a subdeep neem oil and oj neem oil so these are the agrochemicals uh, the subdeep neem oil the uh, manufacturer in india is the king agro food and oj neem oil the ozone bio, ozone biotech so these these are the agrochemicals from the neem based products and if you see the worldwide the neem products so the, the fertilizer are the fortune neem cake there is a fortune biotech usa fortune neem coat the fortune biotech usa then neem cake unival unival corporations russia so they are the producers of the some there are also other producers so we have, we have listed few so the, those have the neem based products that can be used for in case of in organic farming and the agrochemicals that's a fortune aja 3% ec that is from the fortune biotech ajamax that's from upl uh, limited brazil and the safer brand 3 in 1 that's a wood stream corporation canada so they are, they, these are the, from the uh, agrochemicals that used for controlling the pest and diseases in the crop field so uh, as uh, as you can see uh, the so if you summarize this you can say so as a label c pest and disease management so this lecture we have we have discussed about the use of the bio agents natural enemies so there are many natural enemies uh, natural agents present in this, uh, can be reared in the laboratory and they can be released in the field for controlling the harmful insect pest and diseases so those are discussed mainly the uh, predatory box that can kill the uh, kill that can consume the eggs of the brown plant hopper and they protect the rice crop from the attack of the brown plant hopper and you can have the trichoderma species trichoderma that can control many uh, uh, fungal disease and also insect pest disease and also moreover the trichoderma can be very effective uh, in as a growth regu regulator and promote the growth of the crops in addition to the uh, having action on the harmful insect pest and diseases so those are called the microbial insecticides and virus also nucleophilic virus they can be used that the microbial insecticides they can be reared in the laboratory and used in the field for control and regular application of field so that it can control the pest and diseases in organic farming. In addition to this, we discuss the botanical pesticides, right? So that means uh, we can have products from the plant extracts like the neem or the tobacco or this chrysanthemum flowers and the citrus to the plant extracts. So those extracts can be used. So we discussed neem based products. So how the a neem based product can be useful we discuss in the next classes what is the mode of action of the neem based products and what are the neem based products available in india and the world especially in us and the some of the european country, european countries and how the agrochemicals agrochemicals and they are also produced from india that can be used for controlling the pest and diseases yeah, in in, uh, in crops and in next class uh, in the coming um, next class we will be discussing about the more details of bio pesticide neem based products and other products and their formulations and their application pro procedures in the uh, farming in the farming systems okay thank you very much